Rub up your engines! Well, Hyundai and Kia are going to pay $200 million over that lawsuit about them making the cars that are easy to steal. People did Kia challenge where you can steal them using a cable for a cell phone. It all came down to they were just cheap. Everyone in the world's making cars with immobilizer keys so you can't steal the car without having a key that has the chip in it that keeps it from starting. Hence, immobilizer. It's immobile until it gets the magic key. Well, they decided not to make the magic keys people steal them. Now they say, oh well, we're paying $200 million, right? And it's hilarious because it says they're willing to pay up to $200 million. We all know what that means. Load of baloney, right? Now this affects 9 million vehicles, right? That comes out to $22 per car. And they said they'll pay up to that. What a load of baloney these companies get away with. Total baloney. I can imagine what the lawyers are probably getting paid for doing the settlement, right? Now, they're saying owners can claim up to 6125 for out-of-pocket costs, right? I say they about the harassment and the problems that you're going to have when your car's stolen, right? And if you still have a vehicle but it was damaged, they can claim up to $3,375. Let me tell you, somebody steals your car and runs into a tree, it's going to be a lot more than $3,000 of damage, right? As per usual, the corporations get away with murder and some nonsensical thing. We'll pay up to $200 million. We'll never get the actual figures of what they actually spend doing it. Just like when Ford had that class action suit with those dual clutch transmissions that they had in the Fiestas and some of the Focuses and stuff, right? They said, well, we'll pay up to $20,000 to buy your car back, right? And then I had people with them, they'd offer them a couple of grand for the car, you know? It's all a load of baloney. Once it goes out of the law and all these stupid little technicalities and that I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, it doesn't mean much of anything. Anybody who's ever dealt with this stuff in the real life like I have with cars? Customers finds out most of it's a load of baloney. And they're just covering their own heinies. And, well, yours isn't covered because this. Well, that's not an out-of-pocket cost. That's an in-pocket cost. You know how that goes. Blakey says, I got a Lexus IS250. It gets too cold temperatures at high RPM. When I go over 4K, the radiator temperature goes down. I had a new radiator put in. But it keeps doing it. I'm assuming you put a radiator and not because it was getting too cold, because it means it's working, so there wouldn't have been any reason to buy a new radiator. If it's getting too cold, your temperature gauge is going too low, you don't need a new radiator. The radiator is working fine, right? You need to change the thermostats. Modern cars are all high tech, and a lot of them have two thermostats instead of one. Change all the thermostats that your car has in it, and that should solve your problem. Now, if it doesn't, you could be getting a false reading, because the only way you can run too cool if your thermostats are wide open and it's just cooling it too fast. Just get new thermostats and that should fix the whole problem. If not, you're getting a fake reading and it may be reading cold, but it probably isn't. In that case, you get a guy like me or buy yourself one of those temperature guns with the laser point it and see what the temperature actually is. And if you see, well, the temperature's normal, but the gauge is reading wrong, change the sending unit for the gauge then. And Lord says, I got new struts and there's a problem. My 05 Matrix, I put on struts, but it bounces around a lot, especially in the back. Now, one strut was purchased from Rock Auto, and the other one you got from Amazon. The Amazon was the last one left at a good price, so I would have gotten both from Rock Auto. Numero uno. You want to buy a pair of struts the same place, the same exact ones. There's no saying. You can't mix them. They work in pairs, and if one's not made exactly the same as the other, it's going to be squirrel. The thing is, if one of those struts is bad, it'll make the whole back act squirrely. So one's good and the other one's bad. Maybe they're both bad. I don't know. But if one's bad and one isn't, it's going to still make it act squirrely. I would basically start with having the correct ones buy like KYB pair at one place that has a pair, a matched pair, and put them on. Because otherwise, you can't mix struts. You have no idea what the internals are like. I mean, back in the day, somebody said, I got these mineral shocks. They don't work good. What's wrong? And I explained, they're made like crap. And so I took one and I cut it in half. And I found out the rod inside of the Monroe was like this thick, right? Then I looked at a KYB one that I had and I cut it in half and the rod was 
much bigger inside. Bigger diameter is going to work better, right? They're all shiny on the outside, but the only thing that matters about shocks and struts are the inside. And if the inside is thinner and cheaper made, it's not going to work as well. So you want to get good struts as a matched pair. You don't have to change the front and the back altogether, but you have to do the pairs. Both rear ones the same, both front ones the same. Landro says, my car shuts off. Got an OT Corolla, 166,000 miles. If I plug my scanner in, the car runs fine. But if I'm driving the car and I unplug the scanner, the car will die. Hell, you obviously have an electronic problem. You plug the scanner in and it runs, but you unplug it and the car dies. So you're having some type of communication failure. Start by checking the wiring. Because when you plug the scanner in, it uses a ground system. And the way they're set up is, especially on Toyota, sometimes that ground system gets wacky. If you have a scan tool in, it's using the ground system and it'll often allow the computer to work fine in your car to run it. But then when you unplug it, you're taking that out of the circuit. So you probably have a ground fault in your computer wiring system. Get yourself a little diagram, I use all data, and look up where all the grounds are. You could easily have a bad ground. Now you could also have a bad computer, but let me tell you the truth. I've never ever had to replace a computer in a Toyota Corolla unless it had been underwater and it had shorted out. They generally last forever. More often it's you got a ground fault somewhere in there and it's not grounding right. It could also have a power short. More often it's a ground short if you plug the scan tool and it works and you unplug it. If it didn't run at all, it could be a power short, but it's probably a ground short in the wiring system. I'd start by checking out. Pray it isn't the computer itself. Next question. Scotty, what do you think of Mazda's new six-cylinder engine? It's a six-cylinder inline, right? They made the Mazda CX-9, now it's a CX-90. It's a new design. I saw the ads with the Japanese guy. Oh, it's so cool. Cool, and it's got everything you want, you know. It's an interesting design, I gotta say. Straight six cylinder engines generally last forever. Now, this is gonna be a pricey vehicle. If you want to experiment with new technology that they hadn't made for a while, straight six cylinder engines are pretty cut and dry bulletproof, so. I would say they'll probably be good, but then again, I never buy anything that's new. You never know. What if they screwed them all up? Then you bought something, they were all screwed up. I would wait and buy one later. It is interesting. I'll give them that. It's interesting. But as for buying something that's new and out, I warn people against buying those Tundras with the V6 twin turbos. They've had problems, so you, you wait. You wait until it's perfected. You know, me 34 says, why is my check engine light still on? I got a BMW. I took it to a mechanic. He tuned it up, put a coil number three on it. And the check engine light's still on. Couldn't figure out why, so I took it to another mechanic. He said, my car is so old, they don't have a machine to do a diagnostic, so leave it so they can check it out. And he said, I don't know what it is. It runs okay. Leave it alone. Why is my check engine light still on? Well, number one, you're dealing with clowns right? The second mechanic says, your car is so old I can't do a diagnostic. Your car is a 2001 BMW. Since 1995, all cars in the United States work on OBD2. Any OBD2 scanner. You could buy a $30 one on Amazon, like one of the ones that I've shown that works perfectly fine, and you could plug it in and you can see what that check engine light is. These guys are a bunch of idiots. They're clowns. They've been screwing you over. If you don't have a scan tool, go to AutoZone or O'Reilly or wherever and let them scan it and they'll give you the code number. You can send me the code. I'll tell you what the code means. But you're dealing with idiots. They're saying, we don't know why it's on. Oh, it's so old. I can't read. It's not that old. If it was pre-1995, yes. Then you'd need a special BMW scan tool to act on it and it cost a fortune. But in this case, no, it's not too old. There are a bunch of morons that are working on your car. So start with getting the actual code. Clarksville, Tennessee, when I'm there, I'll gladly check it out for free and make a video and show people. Look, there's some moronic mechanics out there. They say they can't even read this. Look, this $30 scan tool will read this. Start with getting the information and forget the guys you've been dealing with because they're a bunch of idiots and I see it all the time the guy says it's too old for us it's not too old <laughs> that's ridiculous Ken Tubal says I got an 07 Chevy Malibu the indicator doesn't show the gears shift or park and the reverse lights don't come on help okay odds are you need a new transmission range sensor it's the part that shows you which gear you're in and also turns the backup lights on now of course 
check fuses and stuff like that. You could have a blown fuse, you know, look through all the fuses. A fuse sends power to the transmission range sensor, so check your fuses first. But let me tell you this, if you have a blown fuse to that, that generally means there's a problem in the system. You put another fuse in, it's going to blow. Fuses can last virtually forever. If there's no problem in the system, it just goes humming along. If a fuse is blown, there's a reason it's blown, and it would probably be a short in the transmission range sensor. So let's say if I the fuse and you put it in. Don't be surprised that when you back up after a short period of time, bam, it'll blow and then you'll be right back to square one. Of course, since it also does include the backup lights, if the fuse is blown, check your trunk because if you have a short in the backup light system, then that'll short the whole system out, pop the fuse. And a lot of times people have golf clubs, they'll knock wires or look at your backup lights. If they're full of water, it means there's a crack in the lens, you need a new lens because the water will keep shorting it up. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.